Hey guys, Kev here, and I have a package to unbox for you. So this package comes by way of Hoback Knives. So uh, Hoback recently came out with a new button lock. It's the Quayback button lock, I believe. Unboxing it with the Elementum 2 button lock I have here. And I'm doing it off camera because my address is on there. It's just a lot of stuff. So... They were very kind enough to send me one of these to review. So I really appreciate that. Um, Hoback, uh, thank you for sending these. I believe these are like $480. So um, was not a cheap review sample to send out. Quayback, Button Lock, Mars Valley. Nice. Fat Carbon and Titanium DLC Black Finish. 20 CB DLC Black Finish. So... They have three versions of this, and they believe they are available right now on their website. Like I said, $480, which I think is, if you look at previous models like the Sumo and whatnot, I think the price point has come down to be a bit more reasonable based on the fact that it's probably made uh, overseas. So I appreciate that. Mars Valley Fat Carbon and everything. It's still expensive at $480, but it's definitely more reasonable than I think the Sumo is like $550 and just titanium, right? So uh, here we go. We have the card right here, commitment to quality. And we do have the little note down here, made in China. So just make sure you read that. They're being transparent there. And here's the information on it. Nine inch, holy shit. This is going to be a big boy. Um, I did not realize how big this was going to be. 4.6. Oh, <laughs> dude. See, this is what I'm talking about. Um, when I got the machete, I asked them if they were going to keep doing patches. And uh, they didn't do one for that one because they said they weren't sure how people were receiving the patches. And I said, dude, you got to keep go doing them. They're freaking sweet. Um, and I just showed this one in my previous video right here. I put this one on the Mighty Pouch. And I have um, this other one for the PS2 Axe that I have right here. Oh, sorry. That's clicked onto the back. But so I have a little collection of their patches. I freaking love the patches, guys. I don't think this guy would fit right here. So I'm going to leave this plus it kind of matches. But uh, as I get more pouches, you for damn sure are going to see those. Really dig their pouch, uh, patches. Sorry. Comes with a tool, which is cool. And oh, oh my God. Dude, look how big this fucker is. Okay, I'm intrigued. I am intrigued. Uh, my good buddy Casey over at Knives Fast already got his. They sent him one in blue. Oh, man. So I could not choose uh, which one uh, to get. They, they let me choose, and I was like, man, I can't choose. They all look really good. They have this one in Mars Valley. Then they have uh, one in Arctic Fat Carbon, which would look like this. So you'd have this material on there. And then they have one in just a blackout uh, 3K carbon fiber, I think. Kind of like this. Pretty sure. But maybe finished a little bit differently. Could look uh, a little bit like this. You know, a little nicer with the contouring and everything. That one looked sweet. It was like a blacked out one. But honestly, between the three, I just couldn't choose. So I was like, you know what? You guys choose for me. And they grabbed the Mars Valley, and I love it. Um, the reds and the oranges just look sexy. And uh, yeah, this is so. This is a model that I've I've not really delved into. It hasn't been on my radar. Um, not aesthetically my style, but I will say the Quichetti is one of my favorite knives it's it's a sword um but it's based on this design and uh maybe if i have a second later i'll show it to you but let's give this guy a flick Ooh. okay hold on okay hold on a second okay so you got a pretty good spring on this thing for a nine inch knife that pops pretty well wow um ergonomics damn pretty solid and you have a a choil a flipper choil which is solid as hell oh shit okay 
Very interesting design. I mean, look at that blade. That is a, what would you call that, American Tanto? I don't know. I'm not the Tanto expert. It's a Tanto, and it looks pretty damn gnarly. Um, the one thing on this design that was always kind of off-putting to me was the end of the handle being like this. It's kind of the same reason um, some of the Arcane knives don't speak to me because they kind of come down to this sort of point. Uh, I think a lot of people like that where it's not my favorite, but um, it does actually fit the hand really well because it's so big. It just kind of hangs out there, especially when I'm choked up. Um, it's a it's a bit of a thick boy, but um, yeah, this is really cool. You got titanium on this side. I do kind of wonder why they did that instead of going full carbon fiber because they could have with a, a button lock, I would think. Um, we can check lock up and such. It is dead centered. Man, that fires. There is no side to side. There is, damn, that is a freaking tank. Now I would think after, um, that was me. There is no jimping on the flipper tab, so my sweaty hands kind of have to give it a, kind of got to rest on there and then give it a whip, and it works great. Um, so I think after the sumo and, and the stuff on that with the button lock failing, maybe they um, made sure that wouldn't happen, and looks like we're good there. I'm not going to go whacking it like crazy. It's a brand new knife, um, but nothing. Don't feel any difference. Compound grind, just not, you know, a uh, hollow and a flat, just all flat. Looks really good. Um, you have what looks kind of like a black wash, could just be a DLC, but um, you do have the uh, Psalm 23 hoe back there. That's, you know, kind of his calling card. Do I love that? No, but, you know, I'll live with it for a cool knife. You know what I mean? Um, I love that they went with a different color on the button versus just the black hardware. Um, and again, this is a real big boy, but actually fits my hand really well uh left-handed button lock works great still getting used to that flipper being a sweaty bastard but um it's kind of like a push switch you know um, you can just straight up light switch it if you want um and then let's see what happens when we have this kind of minimal flipper tab here okay uh, let me try to get out of the way. I think the flipper kind of hit me. So let me see. Can't, I kind of want to ride up here to get pressure on it, but then I'm going to have this flipper tab hit me. So I'm going to come down and yeah, it pops. Let me try it right-handed. It's probably, oh yeah, that works really well. And reversible clip guys. Um, I don't know if I want to do it though. Just because of the fact that, you know, um, there's no play. Like, it's I'm trying to feel if there's any, like, sweat. You can get a little bit of movement, but, man, it's not even close to, like, what you see from ProTech or anything. It's really good. Uh, internal milling is insane. Holy, hold on. Is that a tapper? I don't know what that is. Yes, it's tapping. Okay. So real quick, let's take a look in here. Look at that milling. That is some gnarly ass milling. That's milling right there in the center, right? Yes, look at that. It is all milled out in this area. It kind of looks flat, but that's milled. And more milling. And more milling. It's milled everywhere. Holy fucking sh... That is awesome. Look at the lanyard hole down there. Dude. It may not be my aesthetic style, but I got to give them props on this. This is really friggin' cool. And look at the milling right here, right? I think the only thing better would be if they had gone full carbon. I don't know why they didn't. So we're looking at T8 on the uh, clip screws. So first, we could take a look at it reversed and see how that looks. And then I'm also going to just give the old, uh, give the clip a little tweak because it was tap, tap, tap in there, which is not a big deal to me. Um, you can see we had Loctite on that screw. So just to double check, that's the bottom screw. Let's see if they're different lengths. Top screw. They are identical, so we're good. So what I'm gonna do with this is just bend it down a little bit. So I just do this. 
like so. Not going crazy, just give them a little. Um, and then, man, it's almost like, do I do that? But we might as well try. I mean, it's still going to look good. It's just, I can rock a knife right-handed easily, you know? Because I carry a slip joint basically every day in my as my backup or primary, whatever. So it doesn't matter which pocket I put the other knife in. Uh, I'm just going to let this settle wherever it wants to and see. That looks about right. Well, it has two screws, so it's going to drive itself wherever it wants to go. So there it is flipped over. It looks good. And that side looks a little bit bare now. <laughs> it looks kind of interesting. That's kind of the show side now, right? Um, damn, I am impressed with this thing. I really like it. So left-handed now I have the clip I can grip. Oh, yeah, that makes a huge difference. Because now I'm climbing down the handle to avoid the flipper, but I have something to purchase on. So it just pops. Um yeah, this knife is fucking cool. <laughs> I really like it, guys. I don't know what else to say about it. No more tapping. We're good on that. Um, I keep slipping off of that a little bit because of the no jimps. Let me get my knife out and try it. Very tight clip, but I, I made it tight, so blame myself for that. And it went in pocket just fine. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. I kind of I kind of want to flip it back, but I'm also thinking I could carry it lefty tomorrow and see how I like it. Plus, I'll have a slip joint in that pocket, so I can always flip it at work or something. I have to go in the office tomorrow. Um, but yeah, for a uh, button lock, the flip the uh, detent feels really good. It really does. Um, so real quick, we'll do a size comparison. Uh, we'll do the Elementum two. So this is a big ass knife, guys. This is a no joke style knife. Um, here's the Evo 2.0. Just so you can see, the Evo is what, an eight inch knife? So, I mean, it's even dwarfing the Evo. Um, here's the Kaladin from Jim Skelton. Big knife, 3.6, 3.7 inch blade. Still, I think it's eight and a half overall. Still bigger than that guy. Uh, I think that's the biggest knife I own. So there you go. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. I think it's really cool. Oh, the uh, Quichetti. Hang on. Here's Big Papa. I got the matching. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Got the matching one. So let me get it out of here. So, I'm going to zoom out. Sorry, you're going to see my crotch a little bit. Oh, crap. I hit the zoom button. I hate that. Or the focus. It's going to throw everything off, but it's okay. We're almost done. So, here it is. That is the Kwai Chetty. That is a big knife. There's a size comparison. But you can see the inspiration or the influence, right? You see the handle design comes down here, comes down here blade rides up they're based on obviously the same thing and i i freaking love this thing um i still have not been able to use it or anything but i don't care it's just like something cool to have um i love the axe the machete not as much but i still think it's cool and i'll probably use it because it's not necessarily like um super sort of collectible like i feel like this is um but yeah Really, um, gotta say, I enjoy the shit out of what um, Hoback is doing lately. Now, I know, you know, some people are out on them because of the stuff that happened, but I feel like they've tried to, you know, really put forth a, a good effort on transparency and being public, and I don't know, I just think they're doing cool stuff, and, you know, if you don't like their prices... It's fine. You don't have to pay their prices, right? Um, but you know they have a they have a team over there. They gotta feed everybody. They gotta support families. And when you do that, stuff just costs more money. You know, 
Like, look at Microtech's uh, overseas-made stuff. That price point is basically the same as this. So, at least I think so. The Annex was like 450 that I bought. Um, and this is 480. It's got the camo car or the fat carbon. So, you know, I get it if you have that argument. But um, I think if the knife is cool, you should go for it, especially since you know where it's coming from now, right? I love it. I think it's awesome. Uh, I'm actually surprised at how much I like this knife, to be honest. I thought it looked cool and it was going to be, you know, whatever. But I was like, you know, ultimately might not be my style, but it's not. But it still just, you know, lately I've just been letting knives feel me out. That, that sounded so weird. But I've been letting knives take hold. Like instead of just going, eh, you know, that's what I used to do. I just been, eh. That's not for me. Um, I'm going to give it a shot, and I'm going to carry it, and I'm going to see what happens. Because the last few, like the Giant Mouse, Ace, Atlier, the Skeleton, Kaladin, have really surprised me, and I've fallen in love. So I think this one's going to do the same thing. Um, this is unique and awesome. And that is really cool to see in this community right now. So big shout-out to Jake Hoback Knives. Thank you guys so much for sending this in for supporting the channel um thank you guys for watching link is down below if you want to pick one of these up i would i think it's freaking awesome now that i've handled it i would spend my 480 dollars and buy one of these no joke i'm honestly thinking about it i'm thinking i might pick up the carbon fiber one the just black one because that, that just murdered out one looks sick too um and you know with the black tie side maybe that you know um, so I might end up with two of these. I don't know. I'm thinking about it, but, uh, yeah, I love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and, uh, have some fun guys. Don't take yourselves so seriously. All right. And I'll catch you later. Peace.